one of the things that President Trump is doing is actually negotiating trade. And American independence was actually brought about, the triggering was the Boston Tea Party, was tea. So a great benefit, a great happening came out of thorough exasperation with the British from her colonial people in North America. And it was the, it was the straw that broke the camel's back. And God bless that fact. This is just one of the causes, but maybe it was the tipping point. The North Ministry solution was the Tea Act, which received the assent of King George in May 1773. This act restored the East Indian Company's full, ref full refund on the duty for importing tea into Britain and also permitted the company with the first time to export for the first time with the to export tea oh what a hash i've made of that let's try again so the north ministry this is at 2242 the north ministry's solution was the tea act and which received the assent of king george in may 1773 this act restored the east indian company full refund on the duty of the importing tea into Britain and also permitted the company for the first time to export tea to the colonies on its own account. This would allow the company to reduce costs by limiting the middlemen who brought the tea at wholesale auctions in London instead of selling to middlemen. The company now appointed colonial merchants to receive the tea on consignment. The consignee would in turn sell the tea for a commission. In July 1773, tea consignees were selected in New York, Philadelphia, Boston and Charleston. The Tea Act retained the three pence Townsend duty on tea import to the colonies. Some members of Parliament wanted to eliminate this tax, arguing that there was no reason to provoke another colonial controversy. However, North, Prime Minister North, did not want to give up the revenue from the Townsend tax, primarily because it was used to pay the salaries of colonial officials. Maintaining the right of taxing the Americans was of a secondary concern. This is Lord North, seen here in portrait of Frederick North, Lord North, 1773-1774, painted by Nathaniel Dance, was Prime Minister at the time of the passage of the Tea Act. So just to continue down, whoopsie daisy, so I continue. Upon hearing word of the details of the British Tea Act of 1773, the Sons of Liberty took action after officials in Boston refused to return three shiploads of taxed tea to Britain. The Boston Tea Party was the culmination of a resistance movement throughout British America against the Tea Act, which had been passed by the British Parliament in 1773. Colonists objected to the Tea Act for a variety of reasons, especially because they believed that it violated their right to be taxed only by their own elected representatives. Protesters had successfully prevented the unloading of the tax tea in three other colonies but the Boston embattled royal governor, Thomas Hutchinson, refused to allow the tea to be returned to Britain. Background in September and October of 1773, seven ships carrying British East Indian Company tea were sent to the colonies. Four were bound for Boston, New York and Philadelphia, and Charleston. In the ships were more than two thousand chests containing nearly 600,000 pounds of tea. The Americans learned the details of the Tea Act while the ships were en route and opposition began to mount. Activists calling themselves the Sons of Liberty began a campaign to raise awareness and to convince 
and or compel the consignees to resign in the same way that stamp distributors had been forced to resign in 1765 Stamp Act crisis. Now that's interesting because according to my mother, we are, our family is connected to Sir Rowland Hill who instigated and had to get it through Parliament, which wasn't easy, the penny black stamp, because he saw as a young boy the anguish of his mother every day in case a letter arrived which the receivee had to pay. And in 1840, he, I think it was, yes, it was in 1840 that the first penny black stamp was actually brought into being. I think I'm correct there. Uh, my mother told me that she had she had threaded um, many penny black stamps with a needle and onto some string. So people that were stamp collecting would be going, ah! Oh. <laughs> anyway, and interestingly enough in Hampstead, very close to the Royal Free Hospital, there is a road, a street named Rowland Hill. And I lived there and I passed it very often. It was a nice reminder. However, my cousin did research and she said, no, there is no connection. But anyway, my mother was quite convinced that there was. Uh, so, so here we are talking about the Stamp Act. Wonderful picture of a clipper. So, south of Boston, protesters successfully compelled the tea consignees to resign in Charleston. The consignee had been forced to resign in early December and unclaimed tea was seized by customs officials. By early December, the Philadelphia consignees had resigned and the tea ships returned to England with the cargo following a confrontation with the ship's captain. The tea ship bound to New York City was delayed by bad weather. By the time it had arrived, the consignee had resigned and the ship returned to England with the tea. So here we've got standoff in Boston. In every colony except for Massachusetts, protesters were able to force the tea consignees to resign or to return the tea to England. In Boston, however, Governor Hutchinson was determined to hold his ground. He convinced the tea consignees two of whom were his sons, not to back down. When the tea ship Dartmouth arrived in Boston Harbor in the late November, Sons of Liberty leader Samuel Adams. Now, I have a feeling that Samuel Adams might well have become one of the presidents, but I could be wrong. You certainly had an Adams as a president. Called for a mass meeting. British law required the Dartmouth to unload and pay the duties within 20 days of the customs officials, or customs officials could confiscate the cargo. The mass meeting passed a resolution introduced by Adams and based on a similar set of resolutions promulgated earlier in Philadelphia, urging the captain of the Dartmouth to send the ship back without paying the import duty. Meanwhile, the meeting assigned men to watch the ship and prevent the tea from being unloaded. Governor Hutchinson refused to grant permission for the Dartmouth to leave without paying the duty. Meanwhile, two more tea ships, the Eleanor and the Beaver, arrived in Boston Harbor. While Adams tried to reassert control of the meeting, people poured out of the Old South Meeting House to prepare to take action. On the evening of December the 16th, a small group of colonists, some dressed in Mohawk warrior disguises, boarded the three vessels and over the course of the three hours dumped all 342 chests of tea into the water. Protected by a crowd of spectators, they simultaneously destroyed goods worth almost one million in today's dollars,